can you guys hear the fan noise from this laptop? Hopefully you can because that's today's subject is a loud laptop caused from a fan that's going full blast all the time. From just a few minutes after you turn this laptop on till you turn it off, this fan is going full blast and it's annoying. And I've seen this happen to a lot of laptops, not just HPs, this is a Pavilion, but it happens to all types. And generally, the problem is caused from blockage in the cooling system. The cooling system on these laptops are very small, and these produce a lot of heat. And if there's any blockage at all, they run hard because they need that extra speed. So we can probably clean this out and improve. It may be a defective fan, but uh, we'll find out when we get in there. Anyway, today, the mystery of the loud laptop, and hopefully we'll quiet it down. Let's get started on that. For this HP, I'll show you where the cooling system resides, but this is true for just about all makes and models of laptops, not just HP. In your top left-hand corner, on the bottom, you'll find these vents here, here, and here. There are vents here, here, and in various other places as well, but for the most part, these three vents are the main vents for cooling the CPU and the video card, and that's where most of the heat comes from. And also, the sound, the loud fan sound, is coming from this vent. I don't know if you can see it, I've got a flashlight here, but uh, there's a fan under here. And we'll get a lot better look at that once I take this apart. But the way that this works is air comes in through here, this is our intake passes through some cooling blocks and I'll show you those again when I open this and then the hot air is expelled out these two air vents here so it's just a continuous cycle if you've ever put a laptop down on a blanket and it starts running hard or hot that's because this intake is blocked and Generally, if you have this set on a hard surface, these feet keep this up off the surface slightly so that this gets air intake, you know. But if you have it on a blanket, a lot of times it conforms to that vent and it's not getting the air that it needs. But anyway, back to our problem. The air comes in and then out. And if we have dirt blocking any of these ports at all, it's not uh, getting the full cool. If you've ever had a dirty household fan, you know that uh, once you clean the blades, it works a lot better. And this is the same principle. I would like to add that uh, a quick fix for an overheating or loud sounding fan is to just take a normal vacuum cleaner and to clean out around these vents and actually take the vacuum cleaner and put it right on top of these vents and try to remove the dirt that way. And this might work for a while and temporarily fix your laptop, but uh, it can also cause the dirt to move, especially if it's like pet hair, and it can jam it even worse. So, you know, it may work for a temporary, but it's uh, always better to take it apart, and that's what we're going to do here today. Since we're taking apart our laptop, we want to do it the best that we can without guessing. And the internet's your friend, so what I suggest you do is to Google service manual and then the name of your machine. In our case, it's the HP Pavilion, and we have the DB6700. Uh, and in these service manuals, it's like a PDF, and it will tell you how to disassemble certain things so let's see if I can find what I'm looking for here right here fan heat sink assembly 
So if we go to page 86, it tells us how to remove the various parts and screws and take apart this laptop. So that's the best advice I can give you is try to find a service manual for your particular machine instead of just removing screws or randomly this will really help you out so I'm going to go ahead and use this guide to uh, open this laptop and get to our fan so to begin disassembly of a laptop you always want to disconnect it from your household mains and remove the battery I wanted to say something about this HP I usually call this a pavilion and I know that most of you pronounce it pavilion and it probably is pavilion but I always said pavilion so forgive me if I say pavilion and if it bugs you that much don't bother commenting just stop watching the video I've had other HP videos in the past and people just gripe in the comments about my dialect instead of you know the main uh, problem of what the video is about but uh, yeah, instead of complaining or griping about it just go watch something else so what I'm doing is I'm removing the covers from the optical drive, I'm sorry, uh, from the memory and the hard drive, and then I'm going to remove the optical drive, and that's usually the first step in disassembling these. And then what I like to do is put all my parts together so I'm not confused later. Like I'm going to pull this laptop, or this uh, hard drive out, and this is the cover for it so I'm just gonna keep these together off to the side over here and a lot of times like if I take out a screw like this is the screw for the optical drive here let's take that out and it helps to have a magnetic screwdriver so I'm gonna pull this out and I'll put the screw right there and I'll tape it right to it. That way I know that that screw belongs to this. And it's important that you remember where the screws go and as you're taking out screws, I like to put them on the table and remember where they go and even write a note if you have to because if you put a long screw where it doesn't belong, you can actually damage certain components. So now that I've got the major components of this out, you know, I could take out my memory. Um, I'm going to go ahead and refer to my service manual online. Get these screws out of here. So really the only tool you need for most laptop disassembly is a good Phillips screwdriver. This is a pretty good one here. I like the kind with the swivel top because you can hold it like this and swivel it, you know, without uh, letting go. This is a 261 and you know for a few bucks you can have a pretty good screwdriver and magnetic is important so I'm going to take out these three screws first and that should release the uh, cover my switch cover on the front Hopefully I won't have to take this out, even though it's not no big deal. That's my that's my Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module there. I might have to pull these wires through. Hopefully I don't have to. Alright, I've got those three screws out. Let's see if I can get this switch cover off. Grab under here. If you have to do any prying, I recommend using a guitar pick, you know, a heavy guitar pick works best. Or a piece of plastic, that way you're not marring the finish. It's got like a little ribbon cable on there, on the back. Let me go in for a tight shot on these ribbon cables. There's a certain way to take these off. Maybe I can be some help to you. So I've got a tighter shot on these connectors. Here's one. 
and here's one here and this is a press-on connector you have to be very careful with these because uh, they break very easy but to remove the cable you just simply I have a flat bladed screwdriver here take your fingernail or a screwdriver and just slightly push this plastic ahead just a little bit see how it's moving just like that and then with that sticking out like that you can just pull on this wire and it'll come right out and then when you're ready to put it back in make sure that this is forward like this would be in and then push your wire in then close that back let's do this one here push it forward like that then pull the wire out most of the time that's the type of connectors that are on these laptops and then you'll have these press fit connectors like this and these just pull out and usually I just use my fingernail and pull on them like that just be very gentle you don't want to break these there we go now we can start to see our fan and you'll notice too that there's a lot of dirt I'm starting to see around these connectors so I expect there will be a lot more inside here and that makes absolute sense because our fans are running so hard okay now I'm going to try to take the keyboard out here now another tip that I'll share with you is like there's a screw right here for the keyboard and you might not be able to see it but engraved in the plastic right here is a picture of the keyboard so that's telling me that that screw right there is holding in the keyboard so there's one there's another one over here now the service manual is showing th um, four screws even though I can only find three so evidently they've changed things or I'm missing a screw somewhere so I'm going to remove these three and see if uh, that'll take the uh, keyboard out the service manual is showing another screw over here but I can't I don't see it anyway let's flip it over and see if we can get that out of there a lot of times they'll put out one service manual for a bunch of different types and then they're a little bit different and they don't bother to tell you. So yeah, there was only three holding this in. So you can see there's another one of these clips holding this keyboard in. They're called zero and Zero force clips, I believe is the name of these. On these types, you lift up these little wings, then you pull it straight out. Just don't force anything. Yeah, I can see evidence of hair in this, quite a bit of hair. There's our keyboard. So it looks like we're going to have to go deeper. What we're looking for is under here. Certain computer models are a real pain to get to. The fans. And you pretty much have to take everything off, including the display. It's just a fact of life. And, um, we don't like to do it if we don't have to, but... Uh, to get this front cover off, it's a necessary evil. Well, hopefully you're still with me. I know it was a long road to get to this fan, but here it is, and I've just taken the screw out of there. Let's take a peek inside here and see what's causing all the problems. 
Hopefully you can see that. This is packed solid, full of dirt. Just solid. See there? This thing couldn't breathe. It was just choking on its own dust. And really, all the way across, it is totally blocked up. This probably would have benefited from just taking a vacuum and pulling on this before taking it apart. But uh, who's to say this would have even fit through the vents, you know? And um, as far as the fan goes, the fan's fine, but I'm going to go ahead and replace it anyway because I'm already in here. I might as well. And I'm also going to change the uh, the compound on the heat sink, you know, put new comp um, heat sink compound down and and uh, redo that. But that was the main problem: is that dirt was just blocking those vents, and there's not much there for vents anyway, so that was the cause of our problem. So I'm going to get a vacuum, clean this all up, and start putting it back together. Change out that fan. Well, the work is complete, and the computer sounds absolutely quiet. I've let it run for about an hour now, and you can barely hear the fan. So it's pushing air better than ever, and that was the problem. Just a little chunk of dirt. So... It took some time and we definitely had to take it right down to the motherboard and really in real time it was about an hour's work or maybe a little more for somebody that's never done this before. So if you have to pay a technician an hour's worth of work they also have to make a living so they're going to have to charge you a couple hundred bucks anyway. And for a used computer how much can you buy a new computer for? Maybe $300? So, it doesn't make sense to really send this in for repair anymore, and that's why a lot of repair shops just tell you to buy another one. And again, that's why I'm putting these videos out. Not everybody has $300 to throw at another laptop, so this will help you to fix your own if uh, you have this sort of problem. It's certainly not hard. It only takes a few tools and some time, and you just have to be mindful of your screws and remember where everything goes. A lot of times, pictures will help if you're taking it apart. Use a camera and take a picture where screws go and certain wires go. And if, it, if you break it, it was broken anyway. And this will also solve laptop shutdown problems if you're having trouble where a laptop will only run about an hour or so and then it shuts down. Heat is the number one thing that causes these laptops to fail. And HP has certainly not helped the industry any by making it so hard to fix it. I understand why they do it. They want you to buy a new computer, but at the same time, it makes it not fixable by most. You know what I mean? So anyway, I hope you got some use out of this video and you liked it. If you did, give us a thumbs up and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. And uh, take a look at the ending. I found out where all my stuff that I shot out of my cannon for the 4th of July went. It's kind of interesting. It's in the ending credits, so make sure you watch that. We'll see you. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. I remember when I shot the air cannon the other day. Here's some paper that I didn't pick up. Bird's making a nest out of, it seems, just the white paper. How odd is that? Don't see mama. Anyway, how cool is that?